Hello, I'm Floyd Maxwell, JustThinkIt.com. This video is called Wave 2, Microwave Hell is Coming. I did a video already on the subject of microwave radiation, and this is a follow-up due to quite a few changes, things getting worse, and things I've learned in the meantime in the last three months. First, a correction. In the first video, I talked about microwave radiation absorbing paint being $2,500 a gallon. That was the price for five gallons. So it's only $500 a gallon, my bad. And at this point, I've made so many uh, improvements and reductions in radiation in the home here that probably the next logical step is to give some of that paint a try and just see what happens. I would just take standard paint and put some copper particles in it. If I do that, I'll let you guys know how it goes. My levels are down into the tens, but the goal is indoors is to, to get it down to the one microwatt level. So that's what I'm trying for. And that level is about a million times less than what the ICNRP people say is healthy and fine and don't worry about it. Pretty ridiculous, those guys. Pretty shameful. This is what passes for governance in this field. Second, new gains. Well, we ditched the microwave oven. Actually, we didn't throw it out. We just put it on the curb, and that lasted a few minutes, and someone took it away. Good luck to them. I learned that you can't shield a microwave. There's just too much juice coming out of that thing. And maybe the frequencies, or, you know, it's probably a mix of frequencies, and the ones that sneak out are hard to shield against. I don't know. Just couldn't shield it. A room away, it was equivalent to having a, a cordless phone to your head. The radiation levels, they were in the thousands. Five, ten minutes a day doesn't seem like much, but it's also a thousand times higher than what it should be inside the house. So figure, let's say even if it was just five minutes a day, but it's a thousand times higher. That's like saying it's, you know, a hundred times worse, but it lasts for an hour. Or ten times worse, and it lasts for ten hours. It's not an invisible amount. It's not a negligible amount. And I just wasn't comfortable with it anymore. And, boy, we sure have not missed it. I had mentioned in the first talk about the Panasonic infrared heat oven. It heats in two different ways. It has two different uh, infrared elements in it. I think it uses lights, infrared lights, because it's so small you can heat the thing with a light bulb, kind of like the Easy Bake Oven. Well, it's got two different ones, so it, you know, it works twice as fast type thing. And this thing works at charm. You throw a frozen pizza in there, and in 10 minutes you're eating pizza. It's really unreal. And that's 10 minutes from the time you turn that oven on. Whereas you take a full-size oven, it takes almost 10 minutes to warm up. So which one is using less energy? Which one's faster? And this thing, because it's infrared heat, which is, you know, infrared translation of that is oven heat or regular heat. The heat we were used to from our youth. So this thing is legit. This thing works awesome. And it's, it's really a matter of, in some cases, you have more food than you can fit into one oven worth, one cooking session worth. And if you start splitting into two, that's maybe still, you know, efficient, still okay. But when you split it into, say, three... First of all, you're, maybe the energy and time savings aren't there. And then second of all, say you're serving people. Well, one batch is ready now, and then another batch is ready in 10 minutes. And so it deteriorates for you know larger quantities of people or larger quantities of food. But that's what a regular oven is for. And then the other thing, you know, you want to, with the microwave, you heat something quickly. You know, you throw in a cup of coffee to reheat it. Well, we have a little saucepan, a little stainless steel pot that we just throw stuff in there. And we figured out it takes one minute. Pour the coffee into the pot, put the pot on the stove, put it on high, set the timer for one minute, press start on the timer, a minute later, turn it off, and the whole thing just takes care of itself. It's nice and warm, pour it back in your cup, you're done. Yeah, a couple more steps in a microwave, but you don't need the microwave. One good note was that we had microwave popcorn, and so we donated it to the homeless shelter, you know, the, the food bank, and that feels good. And then just recently, we still had some individual packets in the cupboard that we realized, hey, we're never going to eat this, and so we gave that to someone locally, so that's all good. Microwave popcorn, you know, if that's your reason for having a microwave, you have no reason to have a microwave. Third, funny stuff. We had handed out a one-page letter to locally affected households regarding the microwave radiation from the local cell phone towers. We have an extra bad situation here where the towers, there's a lot of them because the building is very large and they're just all over the top of this building. Because of the layout of the area, the building is lower, slightly lower than the houses set 50 feet lower but of course it's a 200 foot tall building and so we're kind of broadsided by all these microwaves anyway we went and told i took readings and i figured out who was the most affected and we went and gave them all little flyers little one pagers on the subject we couldn't reach everybody so i just stapled one of the copies onto a little utility pole outside of our place 
you know, we weren't soliciting. It was just information. A lot of people read it. And we had even put mylar plastic over it to protect it from the elements. And uh, so it had been up there for a few months. It was starting to look tired. The water had sort of snuck inside. And so it was suggested that I put a new one out there. So I just went through the document and tweaked the numbers because in many cases the numbers were worse than I originally wrote about. And then at the bottom I put in a link to my video, which hadn't been on the original document. Okay, I might have put the link in in the form of a short URL, you know, those URL shortening services. And sometimes you can customize the short URL, and I might have customized it with the name of the retirement complex as the short URL. I might have done that. Anyway, the next thing you know, the brand new letter has been ripped down. So we should moderate that action as minus one, uncomfortably close to the truth. We'll let the whole thing die at that point, I think. All the good people have seen the notice. And I guess at least one bad person. All right, new threats. The Internet of Things. Doesn't that just sound totally innocuous? The Internet of Things. IoT. Well, this is what they're calling microwave radiation emitting stuff now. Like Wi-Fi enabled light bulbs. There are at least three brands of those. So you get to pick your poison. And how about wireless enabling your air conditioner? This is for those who aren't content to control their whole house thermostat from their cubicle. You can now directly control your air conditioner itself to check the Freon level. I don't know. But there's still no sign of what I predicted about a year ago as the ultimate wireless end product. They're drilling down into smaller and smaller items, (laughs) more and more irrelevant items. Well, how about this? How about the Wi-Fi enabled toothpick? When they've done that, I will salute. I will stand and salute. I'll take a picture. I'll post it. And I'll keep you posted if that happens. This stuff would be hilarious and awesome head-scratcher material if they weren't serious about it. Those lead goblets the Romans drank from look positively healthy at this point. Fifth, cell phone fail. I ditched a Nexus 5 recently. All right, I should back up a bit to explain. My most recent cell phone research had revealed that there are two cell phone networks, cell phone systems, let's call them. GSM is the old one, the original, and then CDMA is the new one. And it's supposed to use less radiation. I guess basically mainly by not always going at full throttle. Seems reasonable, right? We had wanted to switch to Ting, T-I-N-G dot com, for our cellular addiction. We had T-Mobile pay-as-you-go phones, and they were fine, but as you use the phone more, it starts to get expensive. Well, Ting is kind of nice because they're not just a blanket charge per month. They have a small charge per month, and then they have very granular pricing. You should check them out. And it's CDMA-based, so it's like the newer technology. And so it was like, okay, we're making good moves here. We're moving to a network we can afford, has affordable rates. It's CDMA-based. It's a Sprint-based network, so that means you have to have a product, a cell phone that can work with the Sprint network. And this is all, all this complication and all these words is because in America, it's, the situation is really gnarly, really a fractured market. In Europe, you just don't have these kind of problems and concerns. Anyway, so the Google Nexus 5, very economical phone to buy. You know, it might be almost maybe a little more than half price compared to, say, the, the Samsung Galaxy 4 or 5 or whatever they're up to. So this seemed like the way to go. So I ordered one for my better half, and then you need a special Ting SIM card. Eh, 10 bucks. So, ordered that, had to wait. At Ting, they order these SIM cards in a batch, right? When they get enough orders, then they're like, okay, we'll order a batch of these. Well, while I was waiting for the phone to arrive, I thought, hey, I'm onto a good thing here, and I ordered another Nexus 5 plus SIM for myself. When my wife's Nexus 5 arrived, I charged it up and then tried to get it working. Well, long story short, I couldn't do it that first day. It turned out it's something to do with, you know, she wanted to keep her cell phone number, which delayed it one day. But along the way, I unearthed a nasty can of worms. Your EMF meter is still your friend. I had the acoustometer turned on sitting right next to the phone while I was walking through the setup. Pretty standard stuff, asks you a few questions, waits for your response. What I didn't expect was that the Nexus 5 was a major radiation blaster the whole time. When you first turn your phone on, that first boot, it takes a long time, it's really slow. But the whole time it was loading up, it was blasting away wireless radiation. And it would get to like a prompt, you know, press OK to continue type thing, and it would still be blasting away. I was pretty alarmed by all that. Also, I was alarmed by the radiation level. I clogged up to 100,000 microwatts per meter squared. That is just so off the chart. I've never clocked that reading for anything. I mean, a level 25,000 will damage the blood-brain barrier. And these levels were four times that. 
I spent several hours getting the phone working. I minimized my contact with the phone. I would give it something to do and I would leave the area. I even tried shielding myself with mesh that didn't seem to work. By the end of the afternoon, I was wiped out. I was physically wiped out and my eyes were hurting. And so I took a nap. I had to. It took until mid-morning, well, till 10 a.m. the next day before I felt like I had recovered from that. And so after that whole experience, I realized that there's basically no limit to the radiation from that phone because the only guideline is if it's stuck to your ear. And when the phone's not stuck to your ear, it can do what it wants. And man, does it ever. It went from being the great white hope, you know, it comes in black and white, to being shipped back. I was like, okay, I'm stuck with my old phone on the GSM network and all that. I decided to not use it. I have it charged up. It's in my pocket, and it's turned off. If I encounter aliens or a pot of gold too heavy to carry home by myself, I'll dig up my portable radiation blaster and set phasers to stun. Otherwise, I consider I no longer have a cell phone. If you need to reach me, leave a message on my home phone. Or send me an email. Snail mail still works. You know, the funny thing is, not using that phone and leaving it turned off. I haven't missed it at all. That's it. I just haven't missed it. Good riddance. But it does show that things are much worse than I thought. Maybe now you can see why I say that microwave hell is coming. You know, I'm not religious. I'm not inclined to exaggerate. I'm good at reducing risks and getting on with my life. But this wireless is penetrating our lives. It's coming to us all, like the Crosby song says. How long will it be before you can't avoid smart appliances? How long will it be before your child has to use a smart gadget at school? How long before office workers are forced to use some kind of 21st century wireless ball and chain? And how long before we learn what a Pandora's box we've opened up? Sadly, I think it'll take about 20 years before we view wireless radiation in the same way as, say, asbestos or cigarettes. The cancers are coming. The cancers are coming. It's now impossible to overstate the wireless radiation problem. We're in the process of going over Niagara Falls. Paul Revere, where are you when we need you? So, I got a skateboard. When away from the keyboard, I care for people professionally. One of the people I care for is of the age and ability level to ride a skateboard. This person also rollerblades, shoots hoops, scooters. Well, I already had all those other things, and so I bought a skateboard. I got a longboard. I always wanted a skateboard, and now I've got one, and I love it. This is what happens when you get wireless radiation out of your life. You become 10 years younger. Since getting it out of my life, I've on more than one occasion sort of done a little calculation, you might say, of how much free energy do I have? I define that as the amount of energy I have after I've done all my chores and activities of daily living, as they say. It's like the money left over after you paid all your bills. I figure my free energy has doubled, and that's probably conservative, since I tranquilize the death rays. Self-medicating no more. One of the things they love to do to us is to get us to buy junk, to eat more, to medicate, and self-medicate. Well, it turns out this isn't that hard once you make everyone feel like crap. Well, this death march runs in reverse as well. Cut the crap out of your life and you get your life back. Block the sleep-robbing radiation and you wake up refreshed and vitalized. And then a funny thing happens. You lose the cravings. Okay, maybe not all of them. We're not curing everything with one thing. But you will crave less. So long, pick-me-ups. I used to wake up, feel awful, and still feel awful after my morning coffee. Morning exercises didn't help much, and some days I had to take two naps. Now I have one nap every two days, on average. Some of my daily treats are going uneaten, or half-eaten. Other daddy's little helpers have been discarded. Sorry, black licorice. I just don't love you the way I used to. Water, fresh mountain water, tastes not just good, but great, all by itself. My exercise times have doubled and even tripled. Most incredible of all, I can almost shoot a basketball. Turns out all I had to do was practice a couple hours a day. (laughs) Who knew? The lies will get worse until the morale improves. On a technical forum, someone counterclaimed to me that the reduction in radiation by living closer to a cell tower was greater than the radiation increase. My response was, this would be funny if it wasn't so seriously wrong. Your phone is a small source of radiation that's, yeah, close by, but it's only on a call occasionally. Those cell phone masks are a large source of radiation and they are always on. 
our online exchange was prompted by a March 30th, 2014 article that talked about how Facebook was considering flying drones, unpiloted airplanes, as a way of transmitting wireless to a city. And people are trying to figure out why are they doing that. The thing is, I had noticed an article some months earlier where Google was doing the same thing. Their dream was to use blimps, balloons, to suspend wireless transmitters in the sky. And like I say, Google gave a a good name to their project, Project Loon, as in Looney Bin. Well, no one's admitted it yet, but I've figured out the reason for these seemingly ludicrous ideas. If you have something 10 miles up in the air, and it's the same 10 miles away from all of us, then no one is too close or too far away. The microwave radiation dosing can be controlled so that we all decay evenly. Frontline soldiers are replaced by evenly irradiated sheep. And those pesky class action lawsuits can be avoided too. Microwave radiation is the new lead or asbestos or fluoride. I saw a comic in uh, userfriendly.org. I'll read it to you. It says a group in Santa Fe, New Mexico is accusing the city of discriminating against electrosensitive people because of wireless internet in public buildings. They have demanded that Wi-Fi services be removed from all government buildings as a remedy. Quote, I'm allergic to Wi-Fi, said one complainant. We need to get rid of it. And then one of the, I guess, standard user-friendly comic strip characters says, I'm allergic to stupid humans. Can we get rid of them too? A couple of months back, I had someone in a Slashdot forum make the comment that most radiation-sensitive people will soon die, and then we won't have to worry about such complainers. What this guy said I really didn't like, and so foolishly he had configured his online persona to display a, a home page. I went to it. He was bragging about his achievements. It turned out he worked at a college back east, and I tracked down which college, and then I went to the HR department, and I complained about this person right to his employer. Unfortunately, their response was, what do you want us to do? You know, if you have to ask, forget it. Never mind. Gunship diplomacy. Evidently, we have lost the ability to be civil, to recognize when our inner jackass has gone AWOL. Decency.com now says marketing advice. Literally. And then there's Bluetooth. I never talked about Bluetooth in the original wave paper, so I'll give you a capsule summary. Bluetooth is microwave radiation, but it is less, and even quite a bit less, than cell phone radiation, if you believe the brochure. Three tooth. There are at least three Bluetooth standards, and things are still evolving to say the least. Take the Fitbit, please. It was in the news a few weeks back because it seems that some Fitbit users got itching and even burns from their Fitbits. Quote, one man told NBC News that he recently noticed an itchy rash and a burning sensation. Well, it's not surprising considering that the Fitbit is made of surgical grade steel. That always causes problems. Wait a minute, what? Okay, never mind the itching. How did the burns happen? It wouldn't be because microwave radiation has the ability to uh, burn stuff, would it? Another quote, kind of feels like when you burn your hand on the stove and that skin dies. So the products were recalled, I imagine. The press stayed quiet on the issue, and no one learns anything. Awesome. I think I'll pass on those fancy Bluetooth headphones. Standard earbuds work, and have wires. Wires are good. They don't care. There's a saying about laws and sausages. Something about avoiding watching the making of either of them. Well, depopulation is also not pretty to watch. And now the news. Not my idea of cute. In February of this year, Wired ran a story entitled, These Might Be the Cutest Parenting Gadgets Ever Made. You'd have to check out the story. I linked to it. Welcome to the age of wireless radiation parenting. Yummy, yummy radiation. Bing bong. Quote, DoorBot is the Wi-Fi enabled video doorbell that allows you to see and talk with visitors through your smartphone from anywhere in the world. Why would you want that? (laughs) What does that offer? Oh, dear. Oh, so that's the way forward. Wi-Fi Forward is a new coalition wanting to expand Wi-Fi. Panasonic gives and Panasonic takes away. Quote, Panasonic invents the world's first microwave-controlled ultra-compact power converter. Yeah, they're just slightly ahead of our time, all right. Speaking of a better night's sleep, this article says the body kills spontaneous blood cancers on a daily basis. The only thing they're missing is when does it do that? And of course the answer is you're able to kill those cancers spontaneously when you are able to sleep. When you sleep effectively, you produce melatonin 
And it's the melatonin that takes care of these cancers spontaneously. I can see the backroom discussion on this one. Let's keep that information to ourselves. Can't have people figuring out what is good for them, can we? And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Oh, yeah. That's one word for it. Comcast customers surprised to learn New Router is also public hotspot. Evidently, there are more than a million people now dosing themselves and their neighbors with microwave radiation in order that Comcast may better dose their other paying customers with radiation. It's such a heartwarming story. Quote, Comcast's broad scatterings of neighborhood and small business Wi-Fi networks can function as a single network. When someone logs on to one such network, they're automatically logged on to all of them, wherever they go. Who says the news is nothing but bad these days? The fine print. The letter I received talked about a new cable modem that I could order from Comcast. No charge? So free, you didn't even have to return the old one. Wow, sign me up. Months passed. The dogs and I checked the mail daily. Sad face. No shiny new modem today, maybe tomorrow. Then, just days before that happy delivery drop-off, I learned what was in that magical box. You see, this spiffy new modem is more than just a modem. It's also a router. Routers route things. Nowadays, routers route things wirelessly, if you let them. Comcast was letting them. Wanting them to, in fact. Hoping to pay for the cost of the new free modems with the wonderful benefits of wireless radiation. Free homespun goodness. Your home is positively beaming. As Brian Regan opined, can life get better? I submit that it cannot. Shelved, then returned. I tried to talk to the good folks at Comcast about the not yet arrived modem turned router. I wanted to know one simple thing. Could you turn the wireless off? Okay, two things. Could you have the device remember what you told it so that when the power went out and came back on, wireless radiation did not? Comcast responded to me by transferring me to non-working numbers and by disconnecting me after I called back and tried again. I was not alone in this, by the way. Online, people commented the same story that Comcast gave them the runaround when they tried to find out more about the wireless. By the time the box arrived, I had long since put away the party favors. Celebration canceled. The box was banished to the basement, unopened. At least I didn't have to return Pandora. Oh, yes, I did. Got the Comcast bill last week. Didn't need coffee that day, as it turned out. Just needed to see that second $8 charge and the return the box and no one gets hurt comment. I didn't need to be told twice. Box went back on Tuesday. I threw in a microwave radiation rant at no additional cost. Comcast was so appreciative, they robot phone polled me last night. If I'd known, I would have had them call my cell phone so I could double dose. Dr. Strangelove. That movie has become associated with one thing in the minds of many. A side-splittingly hilarious rant about fluoridation. All well and good, provided fluoride is not a problem. Interesting that the movie Conspiracy Theory has an anti-fluoridation rant as well. At least you can't accuse them of hiding the truth. It's right there in plain sight, if we would only research the subject. I'm dying to know what will be chosen as the microwave radiation laugh riot video. If you need a second reason, I talked in the original wave about how insecure wireless is. It hasn't gotten more secure in the meantime. In fact, even the latest Wi-Fi standard can now be cracked, according to an article I read this week. Then there's this airport that sniffed everyone's Wi-Fi data. Personally, I blame Canada, which is where the airport was. Worst job in the world? They always seem to be looking for the worst job in the world. How about new cell phone setter-upper? We could tagline that episode with all the radiation, none of the benefits. Win friends with boycotts. Boycott microwave ovens. At your lunch restaurant, tell them you cannot tolerate the radiation for microwave ovens and then boycott them if they won't stop using them. Post information in the break room about the hazards of microwave ovens. I'm sure your safety supervisor will be impressed. Tell your mom friends to reconsider using a microwave to heat their infant's formula. Watch them give you a big hug. Just say no to wireless tramp snap, anyone? More news. Carson of what? There was an article that said it was called The 10 Reasons Why Handheld Devices Should Be Banned for Children Under the Age of 12. Number 9. Possible Carcinogen. Hmm. Uh, might be a reason there. Cozy. And they're just simply Bluetooth stereo ear warmers. Fear the ears. Coming to a flight near you. Streaming flight data to the ground as a way to keep you safe in the sky. Thanks, airplane companies and safety people in the government. And a car near you. Audi announces in-car LTE. LTE is the latest and greatest and fastest and bestest and the most wireless radiation you can drive. 
LTE is so yesterday. The wireless company's bid on something last week. Doesn't have a cuddly new name yet, but they have once again bought more spectrum, increasing the number of channels of wireless. American gladiators should stream just that teensy eensy bit faster in the near and wonderful future. Group hug? Why do my eyes hurt? Think of the penguins. Hearing that there are power issues at the South Pole, this thoughtful slash daughter suggested, why not use microwave transmission? Line of sight should be relatively easy to deal with over there. Not a lot of buildings in the way. It brings to mind the loony moony idea of gathering solar energy on the moon and then microwave beaming it to the earth. I Floyd cast it on this if you want to chuckle. <laughs> what to get the most interesting man? How about a cellular phone tower in a backpack? Well, they got such a beast. <laughs> Onward and ever upward. Who doesn't want 11 times more radiation in the next four years? Quote, demand for spectrum has outpaced our ability to innovate. The reason isn't for a lack of ideas. The wireless industry is pursuing plenty of them, including small cells, millimeter wave spectrum, fancy interference coordination, and multiple antenna schemes such as MIMO. <laughs> all for one and one for all. This guy says he can speed up cell data 1,000 times. Man, what I'd give to be his tailor. <laughs> Expand, expand, expand. U.S. coalitions call for expansion of Wi-Fi airways. Newly formed coalition of U.S. technology firms and advocacy groups called Thursday for the expansion of Wi-Fi, saying airwaves are getting congested for a key pathway to the Internet. The new coalition calling for expansion of unlicensed or free spectrum for Wi-Fi includes Google, Microsoft, Comcast, the Consumers Electronics Association, Best Buy, the American Library Association, and the Tech Industry Association, CompTIA. It's a miracle. No, they are. Paul Mitchell of Microsoft calls it the miracle of Wi-Fi. Turns out there is a miracle Wi-Fi product. What's taking so long? Wi-Fi use is growing 68% a year. There's now a group called Wi-Fi Forward. And it seems cancer cases are set to rise by 50% in the next 15 years. And it seems cell phone dangers what they don't want you to know. Dr. Mercola is talking about it, but what does he know? He's only a doctor. Finally, a letter. Someone wrote to ask me what they can do, given that they need to use their wireless device every day. Well, in part of my reply, I said, your tablet or any wireless device, when it's on your lap or in your hands or five feet away, is a major source of microwaves. I returned a smartphone I had bought due to the super intense radiation it put out even when used at arm's length. Levels similar to a microwave oven, continuously, for any moment the phone is communicating, exchanging information. I would heartily encourage you to use a wired internet connection in your home. I realize this could become a new cost item for you. I would still recommend you do this. If you bought or borrowed a good microwave measuring meter, you could see for yourself how high the levels are. My own router that I have now set up for wired connections only puts out wireless radiation in the 20,000 microwatt per meter squared range, a level that's been proven to damage the blood-brain barrier. And then when this person asked, was there any way to reduce the radiation while still being able to use their tablet? I said, it would depend on what you're doing with your tablet. If you are, for example, taking notes, then there's no radiation. Anyway, it might be feasible to reduce the radiation to some extent, but honestly, it would be at least as much trouble as it might be worth. What I can suggest is this. Get yourself a meter so you know what threats are in your environment. Try to reduce those threats. If you do, ignoring the tablet for the moment, then you are ahead of the game, and you will start to think about the whole subject. Also, if you reduce your wireless levels at night and start to get better sleep and thus have more energy and feel good, then it might motivate you to want to try other things. I would say if you're out and about doing work stuff, then this is a time when using a wireless device makes more sense. It's generating revenue for you. It may not be ideal in all ways, but it's a necessary part of your business model, your revenue stream. But I would cut out wireless video watching or reading of the daily news or large downloads. Switch these more optional activities to a wired connection. It's a matter of degree and of education, so try a smaller change. Also, know your levels and try to minimize what you can. I concluded with, microwaves are the new fluoridation, but potentially even worse for at least some of the population due to extreme dose variation. Fluoridation is positively democratic by comparison. The pace of change. The above stories are just from the last three months. The only good news is what has come from getting wireless out of my life. The miracle of Wi-Fi isn't. Save yourself and those you love before it is too late. Good luck with your life and take care.